Good day, Grade 12 learners! I am your teacher, Cheryl K. Vinavalta. How's your day? I hope you are now ready to unleash your creative writing juices with our new lesson for today. Please bring out your notebooks, pen, learning activity sheets, and assessments, and buckle up for today's episode. Just a few reminders before our session. First, always observe health protocols such as frequent hand washing. Second, focus. Pay attention and participate actively. Third, remove distractions. Find a quiet space to learn. Fourth, don't be afraid to ask questions. Feel free to type your queries on the comment box below or send me a personal message. Fifth, Submit all required outputs. And lastly, have fun! But before we tackle our new lesson, let's first have a review of what we had discussed last episode. Last time, we had discussed about writing a critic. What is again a critic? A critic is a genre of academic writing that briefly summarizes and critically evaluates a written work. A peer critic, on the other hand, is the process of reviewing and providing constructive criticism of each other's works. We also discussed that in critiquing, we are focusing on two components, the form and the content. Can you still identify form versus content errors? Let's have a review through this activity entitled, Form versus Content. I will be showing statements and try to identify whether the sentences contain errors of form or content. You are only given 5 seconds to spot the errors. Are you ready? Let's begin! SLEX is the longest bridge in the Philippines. What type of error is shown? That's right! The error is on content. It should be San Juanico Bridge. How about the next item? Our environment are slowly dying due to the destructive human activities. What type of error is shown? Good job! The error is on form, particularly subject-verb agreement. How about the next item? The Earth rotates around the Sun for 365 days. What type of error is shown? Very good! There is an error in content. The word should be revolves. Let's try the next one. Filipino citizens should collaborate and be coordinating to solve economic and environmental issues. What type of error is shown? That's right! The error is on form, particularly in parallelism. How about the last item? Photosynthesis is the food-making process of plants. What type of error is shown? Good job! The error is on form, particularly spelling. Did you spot all errors? Great job! You are now a great critic. But you can also apply that skill on your own writing, especially during your revising stage. And that will be our lesson for today. But before that, here are our lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define revising, identify the different revising approaches, and revise the draft based on desirable qualities of well-written creative nonfiction. First, let's define revising. Revision literally means to see again, to look at something from a fresh, critical perspective which involves rethinking of words, reconsidering of arguments, 
reviewing of evidence, refining the purpose, reorganizing of presentation, and reviving of stale prose. Last episodes, we had differentiated revising from editing or proofreading. Proofreading involves a surface-level scan of your paper or making sentence-level changes. Revising, however, refers to the process of making substantive changes to a written form including content, structure, and organization. Revision is the chance to look into the written work critically. If it is really worth saying, if it says what the writer wanted to say, or if the reader will understand what the writer is saying. In revision, it is important to use forceful verbs. Cut as many prepositional phrases as you can without losing the meaning of the text. Check the variation of sentences, aim for the precision in the choice of words, and look for sentences that start with it is, or there are, and revise them to be more active and engaging. Revision applies the A, R, R, R approach in writing, namely, add, arrange, remove, and replace. First is add, considering the number of words needed, including information to make sense in the written output, adding scenes and details using sensory words for emphasis. Next is rearrange. Keeping the flow, pace, and sequence of the written output in order. Third, remove. Eliminating words that do not quite fit. And lastly, replace. Asking second opinion to clarify work. And rewriting and replacing details based on feedbacks. In order to revise a text easier, it is good to follow some tips. Here are 9 practical ways to review and revise your writing. Write earlier in the reporting process. This teaches you what you already know and what you need to know. Maybe that hole you thought you needed to fill was already complete, but you might see other gaps more quickly. Hit the print button as early as possible. Computers are wonderful but they give the illusion of perfection. Use a printout to cross things out, write in questions and examine your writing, which sentences hold up, which needs retooling, and others. Put it away, even if you only have few minutes between assignment and deadline. Write attempt to put your story out of your mind will give your unconscious mind the chance to work on it. Have I really supported my lead? Should I move that quote higher up? Do I need to make a quick call to check effect? Break your vision into manageable tasks. Sometimes, the sheer enormity of revisions is overwhelming. Make separate printouts, one for names and titles, another for verb constructions, and the third to trim the fat from quotes. Read aloud. Listen to your story and you can hear where it flags, where the quote runs on or echoes the previous phrase. Next, diagnose then treat. As you read, make quick quotes. Cut, move up, boring, stronger evidence, then go back and make the necessary changes. Test your story against your focus. If it's about a young woman's fight against cerebral palsy, why does it begin with an anecdote about her grandfather's experiences in the California Gold Rush? Find a first reader. Editors are our first readers and our last line of defense. Show your draft to an editor or a colleague. Ask them to tell you what works and what needs work. Better to have someone help you find the path to a clear, concise, readable story than let the whole world see your mistakes. Develop patience. Good writing will come if you keep at it. Can you now start the process of revising? 
but to further test your understanding, let's have our final activity. We'll have a multiple choice test. Just choose the letter of the best answer. You are given 5 seconds for each item. Are you ready? Let's begin. Number 1. Coherence is A. Always objective, especially in formal essays. B. Always subjective, especially in creative writing. C. Subjective in creative writing, but objective in formal essays. D. Objective in creative writing, but subjective in formal writing. That's right! The answer is letter C. How about the next one? What goes into your body paragraph? A. Information about the topic. B. Evidence or examples I find funny. C. Information about random material. Or D. Evidence or examples that prove my thesis. Very good! The answer is letter A. How about the next one? Which among the choices can serve as transition signals? A. First, finally, however. B. In conclusion, on the other hand, as a result. C. Subordinators, coordinators, adjectives, prepositions. Or letter D, all of the choices above. That's great! The answer is letter D. How about the next one? Which of the following is not a good technique for ensuring coherence? A. Use topic sentences. B. Repeat your key terms. C. Craft transitions carefully, or letter D, ensure that your thesis statement is persuasive. That's great! The answer is letter D. How about the last one? The grammatical aspects of writing and its focus on the degree of which sentences or even different parts of a sentence are connected so that the flow of ideas is easy to follow. A. Cohesion B. Coherence C. Organization D. Writing conventions That's great! The answer is letter B. Very good grade 12 learners! It seems like you are now very familiar with revising drafts. To learn more, feel free to read related materials about our topic. For your enhancement activity, using your draft from the last episode, try to come up with a revision. Be guided with the rubrics provided. Very good grade 12 learners! You are now a step ahead in your creative writing journey. Please keep in mind the concepts that we had learned all throughout this creative nonfiction subject. Again, this is your teacher, Gerald K. B. Navalta. Study smart, keep safe, and see you again next episode. Bye!